Hi, this is David Mike Turtle, continuing a series of working practice questions. This for the Financial Risk Manager, or FRM exam, part one, topic four, which is valuation and risk models. And specifically, this question queries value at risk or VAR. I'd like to read the question and then ask you to pause the video and see if you can get the answer and compare your answer to my explanation. That really is the best way to drill these concepts. So let's look at the question. You are asked to estimate the value at risk of an investment in Big Pharma. The company's stock is currently trading at $23 US dollars. And the stock has a daily volatility of 1.5%. Using the delta normal method, what is the one day 95% confident VAR of a long position in an at the money put on this stock if the put has a delta of negative 0 0.50 so you'd have about three you'd have less than three minutes to answer that on the exam notice it's a put option on the underlying stock which is currently trading at twenty three dollars I've inserted a bonus question here what is the long option positions 10 day VAR the reason I did that is because this question just as easily could have asked you for the 10 day VAR instead of the one day VAR try to do both Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and then we'll look at the answer. Okay, I always like to go back and start with finding the question. Sometimes the question is buried. And what is this question asking us for? It's asking us for the value at risk of a position, which is the worst expected loss of our position. It's a downside risk measure. Hopefully you're aware that VARN has two aspects to it, two design features. We need to specify, or it needs to be specified, what the holding period is and what the confidence level. So here we're interested in our worst expected loss over one day with 95% confidence. Now, is it the VAR of the stock? No, it's the VAR of the position, which is a single put option on the underlying stock which currently trades at $23. So it's a put option. Do we have all the information we need to price or do a valuation of that put option? In fact, we do not have all of the inputs. That's okay because we've got the delta. Now hopefully that delta of negative 0.5 makes some sense to you because a put option must have a negative delta or delta between negative one and zero. Technically that's the percentage delta here of negative 0.5. Again, that was given to us in the question. And it means that if we're long a put option and the stock moves up by $1. So for example, from the current 23 up to 24, then our long put option the value of that goes down by about 50 cents on the dollar. So up a dollar on the underline, down 50 cents on the put option. If it were a call option, this would be a positive. Now importantly, I've got this approximation because we never want to forget that if we're along a option, put or call option, it's a nonlinear function of the underlying stock. It's nonlinear. This delta on the other hand, is giving us a linear approximation, emphasis on approximation, and therefore we actually know that it's not precise. It's got a, it's gonna be off because there's curvature, a gamma in our price, in the relationship between our option and the underlying stock price. But what does our question asks us for? It says using the delta normal method. What is the delta normal method? Well, there's two parts to this. The delta part means that we are satisfied with the linear approximation. We are going to be okay just to rely on delta, and we know that it's going to be inaccurate. And that's going to be a little bit okay because it's only a one-day holding period. What does the normal part of delta normal mean? It means that we're going to assume the underlying risk factor is normally distributed. In this case, our position is long a single put option on the underlying stock and our risk factor in fact is the stock price so delta normal and the normal part of that means we're going to assume that the stock price is normally distributed I'm sure you know that that's controversial 
The, it's also mitigated by the fact it's only a one-day holding period, but it's going to allow us to only need the volatility. That normal and delta normal means that volatility is all we need to know about the risk of this underlying risk factor. So knowing that we're doing the delta normal method, probably the simplest method of all, we have all we need. And we could, if we want, calculate the one day 95% confident VAR of the stock simply by taking the stock price, multiplying by its volatility, and then scaling that volatility by the normal deviate. And that normal deviate corresponds to our confidence level. So if we were instead assumed 99% confident, the normal deviate would be 2.33. But we've assumed, or the question has asked us to assume a 95% confidence. And now it's a normal deviate because we're going back to an assumption of normality. And so we get 1.645. And so just by multiplying those three together, we get a one day VAR on not the put option, but just the stock. In other words, 95% of the time, if that stock is normally distributed, we wouldn't expect a one day loss to exceed 57 cents. But the question didn't ask us about the underlying stock. It asked us about a put option on the stock. And that's where the linear approximation allows us to simply multiply the stock by the delta or by the option delta. And hopefully you may even remember to use an absolute value there we would really want to take the absolute value of the delta. So by virtue of delta and the delta normal method, which allows us to use a linear approximation, which allows us really to just say that the risk of the option is just a linear function of the stock price, specifically it's 0.5 of, we effectively get to multiply the stock by the delta, by the stock's volatility and then scale the volatility by the normal deviate as a function of the confidence level. So a lot of concepts built in there, but we end up just multiplying all four of these parameters and we get about 28 cents. And what does this mean? Well, it means that 95% of the time we don't expect the daily drop in the value of the put option to exceed 28 cents, or I like to restate it in significance terms, 95% confidence corresponds to 5% significance. So we say at least 5% of the time, oh, let me start again. 5% of the time, we expect the value of the put to drop in one day by at least 28 cents. Now, finally, in terms of scaling from one day to 10 day, Hopefully you're aware that we could have employed the square root rule, which allows us to scale by scale from one day to 10. So we really can just multiply by the square root of 10. And now that's telling us that 5% of the time we expect a 10 day loss to be at least 90 cents given these other assumptions. But here is the one day var the actual answer to the question, and I hope that was helpful. This is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.